Hello, I'm Yashish reporting for First Updates Now. And today on Behind the Bot, we have Team 19411 Tech Tigers from Massachusetts at the Chicago Robotics Invitational. They have a very unique robot with a uh, boot wheel intake, as well as LED screens on both sides of their robot so that the drivers know what is going on at every step of the match. Learn more about Tech Tigers and their robot on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. So to start with your drivetrain and how you control your drivetrain during autonomous and tell you whatever sensors you use, do you want to talk about that? I guess I'll start with what we use for our drivetrain if we could just turn this over. Yeah, so we got a standard four mechanism wheel drivetrain, just timing belts to the four motors. We kept them low and centered so that our center of mass is nice and down. And then there are dead axles, which we found keeps it all functioning for a much longer time without maintenance. Uh, we use a variety of sensors for accurate driving during and autonomous. We got a camera back here, there, that we used to detect the team prop and detect April tags. Uh, we have two distance sensors in front, which we used in autonomous for intakes off the stack. Inside the, inside the robot, we've got two color sensors here that will detect pixel colors and also tell us when the pixels are in there. We have an external I Navex IMU right here and we have dead wheel odometry on the bottom. Both of those are for localization. Oh, and we also have a distance sensor up here for back just now. Moving on to your intake and outtake system, how did you guys iterate the design and desi decide on this sort of design for your intake? And how have you really made it efficient for use in the competition? So we started off the season by really analyzing everything about the game and coming up with a really solid strategy before we started building anything. So when we jumped into building and designing, we came up with a list of key requirements, such as the intake has to intake off the stack, meaning it has to have variable heights or the dropper needs to drop in multiple orientations. And based on that, we designed the CAD models. And when we eventually put them together, we went through extensive tuning and testing to make sure the transfer was right. And that actually took us a lot of time to get right. So we have a little one-way latch back here that makes sure the pixel doesn't fall out. And uh, then we just tested it more and overall it's pretty consistent. Um, moving on towards your uh, outtake system, how is that sort of designed? How does it deposit the pixels? And do you want to demonstrate how, it, uh, how the entire system together along with the intake really moves the pixels along? Yeah, so the pixels from the intake, it goes up the ramp into the dropper. So both of them are positioned at the same angle so that it slides right in. Like Alyssa mentioned, the one-way latch keeps the pixels from falling back out afterwards. So that's how they stay in. Can you bring it up? Um, there's these two flaps here um, used to grip the pixel. We actually use like rubber from a ping pong paddle to hold it in place. And then the dropper can drop in a couple different orientations. It can drop vertically like this or horizontally, which I don't know. Yeah, like that. And then it can drop one or two at a time. So this gives us a lot of flexibility when we're making mosaics and just if we need to drop certain pixels in certain places. We also have like a few different stages of rotation here. We call this the major pitch. So this is what pulls the dropper out from the robot. Then we have rotation here. This is what allows us to switch from vertical drops to horizontal drops. And then we also have minor pitch here for a more fine adjustment of the dropper position. Uh, and then finally moving on to end game parts of your robot. How does your robot really launch a drone or even hang on the rigging in order to score those points? For the hang, we have integrated hooks on our slides. We were just like, there's no point adding additional systems. We can just tuck it in back here and keep it less complex. They've been working quite well for us. 
And for the drone, we just have a modified open source drone launcher by, I believe, Blue Bot Builders. Um, and then finally, moving on to driver enhancements throughout software. Uh, how do you guys proceed about those? What are your driver enhancements? Obviously, you have the LED screens on three sides of your robot, so you can talk about that as that's something really unique. The LED screen started as an idea from last year at Worlds. We saw teams using it, but they weren't really functional. They're more for decoration. Uh, so we took it and we experimented with it over the off season. And now we have these LED screens, which are fully customizable. Each, sing each individual pixel can be controlled, which is something not a lot of teams have. And each thing has a function. So over here, we, over here, it's there, not there right now, but we have uh, the pixel colors, which is detected by the color sensors that were mentioned. This is an intake height indicator, which is used because we can't see the intake. Uh, we have a game timer here, which is useful so you don't have to look up. And we also show when the dropper is open or closed. On the sides, we have our drive mode indicator. Right now it's in normal mode, but we also have a mode called lane assist, which using odometry will localize the robot to a certain lane so it does not hit the trusses. We also, it'll also show you when our, our D-score prevention system is active which the Z-score prevention system uses the camera when dropping to detect when detect the April tag distance and uh, slow down the robot accordingly so we cannot D-score pixels. Thank you so much for joining us on the Behind the Bot. This robot was really unique and really interesting to see in action. Thank you so much for joining us. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to anymark.com robits to learn more and order today.